Hello everyone. We are going to discuss about a topic called as metallurgy. Now to start with, what do you mean by metallurgy is? It's all about the process of extraction. Now when I use this word extraction, it's in simple words that we carry out a separation. Now separation basically involves the removal of one particular substance from a mixture. Now let me be very clear my dear friends that whenever we talk about metallurgy we talk about extraction with reference to only metals. So in this particular concept only the metals is something which is wanted for us. Anything else is going to be unwanted. Now other thing which I want you to be very clear is that whenever we carry out the extraction process it has to be only one metal at a time. So sometimes what happens is that our prime interest of extraction of one metal is say copper. Now along with copper there are chances, there are probabilities that metals like gold and silver is also present. But because our focus is entirely on extraction of copper, so gold and silver also is considered as a unwanted material which we call it as impurity or which we call it as gang or matrix. All right? And at the same time, the non-metals obviously are going to be impurities. Now, when we talk about the metals over here, basically the starting material that we are going to consider is the metal are going to be present in two possible states. State number one, we call it as a free state. And the state number two, we call it as combined state. Now the difference between free state and combined state, my dear friends, is when I talk about free state, that means the metal is not forming a chemical bond with any other element. It can be physically associated with some other substances, but no chemical association. That is called as a free state. When I talk about a combined state, so that means it is chemically associated. Now when I'm talking about a metal chemically associated, that means it's very obvious, its association is going to be with non-metals. Say for example oxides, say for example sulfides, sulfates, nitrates, all these are negative radicals and metals being positive have a tendency to combine with them. So this is what the difference is between a free state and a combined state. In both the cases, the metal is going to be in association with but then the extent of it all association, the type of association differs. In free state, the association is physical association. Whereas in combined state, the association is chemical. Now when we use the basic term which is involved in metallurgy and that is we call it as minerals. Now whenever we talk about minerals, the substance has to satisfy two criteria. Criteria number one is that it must be naturally occurring. And the criteria number two is, as I said, it should be, the metal should be either in the free state or it has to be in a combined state. So that means in simple words, it has to be in association with other substance. Now when I stress on this word, naturally occurring. Naturally occurring, we talk about basically earth's crust and atmosphere. These are the two things where man is not responsible for its creation. Yes, due to its activities, it is trying to destroy it but then it's certainly not responsible for its creation. So here, whichever species are present, we call this as naturally occurring. Now Earth's crust is present below. Metals being denser, having a higher density, so obviously it is going to settle down. And therefore we say that whenever we talk about metals, we talk about presence in the Earth's crust. Atmosphere is at a higher level, so that means we talk about gases because gases are lighter and they are going to rise above and therefore we say the atmosphere is nothing but it's made up of gases. But here because we are talking about metals, so that means our prime interest of natural occurrence is obviously about, yes, the earth's crust. Okay, so that is what we need to consider and the second which I already explained to you, that means it should be either in the free state or combined state. And then now we talk about another concept and that is called as ores. Now ores is basically nothing but they are minerals. But then the difference is the extraction which has to be carried out has to be from the profitable part. Extraction is profitable. Now when I use this word profitable that means what exactly I mean. 
Now, the process of metallurgy comes under a large-scale industry. Now, when you talk about large-scale industry, so it's very obvious that the profit margin also has to be more. Now, here in this case, when you talk about the extraction of a metal, final aim, and that is nothing but the finished product, which you call it as, and that is nothing but the metal in the pure state. So it's very obvious that the metal in the pure state has a higher commercial value as compared to its raw material. So when I use the word profitable, that means the first important thing is the profit margin has to be more. Now the profit margin to be more in terms of economic power, and that means it's very simple that the cost is to be less. Whenever the cost factor is less, whenever the expenditure is less, and the income is more, it's very obvious that the profit margin is high. So that means we are going to carry out such a process where the expenses is less, where the cost factor involved is less. That is one part. The second part is, and that is about the amount of the pure metal. Sometimes what happens is we carry out the extraction process. My dear friends, it's not a single step process. It takes a large number of steps. And at the end of the day, if we get a very small amount of the metal, it's not profitable at all. So the second point which has to be taken into consideration when we talk about profitable part and that is nothing but its amount. So profitable involves two things. First aspect and that is the cost factor. It has to be minimum as possible. Expenditure has to be minimum. And the second thing which we talk about and that is obviously the large amount of the pure metal has to be obtained. And from that particular mineral where this extraction is possible in a profitable manner, that is what we call it as what? Ore. So ore is basically a mineral only, but then the only important term which is going to differentiate between the mineral and the ore, and that is nothing but this part, my dear friends, and that is what? Profitable. When the extraction is carried out just like that, please be very clear, because many times what the student says is that extraction cannot be possible from mineral. No, it's absolutely wrong. Extraction is possible from the mineral. A particular metal can have n number of minerals as long as it's going to satisfy these two criteria. But then only from that particular mineral from where the extraction is going to be profitable that is being termed as the ore. Okay, so extraction is possible from the mineral but then extraction possible profitably and that is going to be from the ore. Other thing which my dear friends I would like you to be very clear and that is Many times what happens is the metal has got more than one ore. The reason is because when I use the word profitable, I take into account the expenses part. Now, you know that the mineral or the ore is going to be available from the earth's crust. And the composition of the earth's crust is not uniform. At particular places, you find greater deposits of that particular mineral or that particular ore. So expenditure also is going to be taken into consideration where the availability is there and where the actual industry is located. All right. If the space or if the distance between the two is less, then obviously the cost is going to reduce. So it all depends upon the geographical conditions and accordingly we decide at that particular point of time that which is going to be the ore. So there is a possibility that a particular metal can have more than one ore. But then the difference between the metal and ore, I guess it's very clear to all of you all, and that is it is the profit which plays a very important role. And that's the reason we play, write a very important statement, which I'm very sure everybody would understand, and that is that every ore is a mineral. Because the definition of the ore itself starts from its mineral. So every ore is a mineral, but every mineral is not an ore because it's not possible to extract the metal from the mineral profitably. So for every mineral is not the ore. Okay, so this is a very important statement. Once again, I repeat, every ore is a mineral. But it's not necessary that it is extraction from the mineral is going to be profitable. So therefore we say, but every mineral is not the ore. All right. So I hope you understood this particular concept very well. So to just to take a brief out about what exactly the introduction part was, we talk about metallurgy, where we talk about extraction of only and only metals. And that also one metal at a time. 
So if there are multiple metals being present together, so we consider only one metal at a time, the remaining metals are considered to be as impurity. Obviously, the non-metals are also considered as impurity. Now, the raw material, the starting material is nothing but, we talk about ore. The extraction has to be taking place. The precursor, which we call it as, is the ore. And the finished product is nothing but the pure metal. Okay, which we get it around say 99.999%. Okay, that is the pure metal that we try to aim to achieve that. So, metal basically occurs in two states. Free state as well as combined state. In free state, there is association, but it's physical association. Whereas in combined state, it's going to be a chemical association in the forms of groups which are having negative charges. Okay, and then I made a concept clear between mineral as well as ore. For a substance to be mineral, two criteria. The metal has to be either in a free state or a combined state. That means it has to be in a particular association. And the next thing is, it has to be naturally occurring. And that means it has to be in the present in the Earth's crust. And from the mineral, where the extraction possible is profitable. That means the cost factor is less, so that the profit margin is more. And we get a large amount of the metal, that we call it as a ore. And that's what we say, that every ore is a mineral, but it's not necessary that every mineral is going to be ore. Okay, I hope you have understood this, so please have a look at this.